to the second part of Bethany's introduction to co-sponsorship. In this video, we'll explain what co-sponsorship means and talk about Bethany's approach to co-sponsorship. Bethany's hope is to welcome newly arriving refugees to their new homes in a way that respects the stories, backgrounds, and cultures of each refugee. We want refugees to feel comfortable in their new homes and over time become self-sufficient and thriving members of their new communities. In 1975, Howard and Mary Bell Shipper of Grand Rapids, Michigan were returning home from a religious conference. The conference theme was, if you want your church to be successful and have some impact, find a need and fulfill it. By chance, the couple shared a flight with several Vietnamese refugee children that were arriving for resettlement in the United States. The shippers were so inspired by their encounter that they began a program in their local church to support refugees coming to West Michigan. This initiative blossomed into a partnership between many churches. Much of this initial growth happened informally and organically with dedicated volunteers and program staff working together to serve refugees. Over time, these systems were documented and formalized into what we now call our co-sponsorship program. Today, Bethany's vision for co-sponsorship is essentially the same. We are building partnerships between Bethany staff and community groups to welcome refugees who arrive in the U.S., connect them into their new communities, and help them become self-sufficient. Co-sponsor teams commit to supporting a refugee family for the first 180 days after they arrive in the United States. While the length of the commitment and the overall goals are the same for every co-sponsorship, it will look different for each team and refugee family, depending on the needs of the newly arrived refugees and the strengths of the co-sponsor team. In some cases, co-sponsorship will look like driving refugees to medical appointments. In other cases, it could involve helping families shop at U.S. grocery stores. Or maybe it will look like sharing food familiar to a refugee family and helping them learn English. In every case, your team will play an integral role in helping refugees feel comfortable in their new homes and communities. Co-sponsor teams are often connected to churches and other religious communities, but this is not a requirement. Co-sponsors come from all types of backgrounds. Sometimes co-sponsors can even be former refugees who are passionate about serving people with similar stories and backgrounds. If you're watching this video, you've probably been in contact with a staff member at your local Bethany branch who is helping you begin the journey towards becoming a co-sponsor. If not, that would be the first step. Your contact person at Bethany will be a key part of your journey and an essential resource for you at every step. Your Bethany staff contact will also help you understand the ideal size of your team for the needs of the refugees you will be supporting. Before you can begin to serve a refugee family, your team will need to complete a vetting process. This process consists of collecting background information on team members, as well as completing required Bethany forms. It's also required for the group to be able to utilize Bethany's liability insurance if there were accidents or issues that arose during the established volunteer time. Your Bethany staff contact will help you and your team complete all the steps in the vetting process. Once an arrival date for a refugee family is set and the community organization has built a co-sponsor team, a Bethany staff member will provide training. This video series is the first step of the training. You'll also have an orientation with a Bethany staff member. This orientation may be provided in person or virtually if needed. Following the orientation, the co-sponsor team will decide on individual responsibilities. Ideally, there are several different types of responsibilities within a team. These responsibilities may be split individually or into groups of two or three individuals, depending on the size of the team. We'll talk more about the details of these roles and responsibilities in a later video in this series. A strong working relationship between the Bethany case manager and the co-sponsor team is vital 
The case manager will be responsible for communicating needs with the co-sponsor, and the co-sponsor will be able to communicate any issues that arise with the case manager. It is Bethany's expectation that the case manager responds to communication within two business days. For ease of communication, the co-sponsor team should identify one or two individuals on the team who will be the main points of contact for the case manager. These key individuals are typically designated as the team captains. What has contributed to my passion serving refugees? So, first of all, there's there there's kind of a sense of uh, duty, like I should be doing this, but it goes deeper than that. You know, there's a saying, we can only keep what we have by giving it away. And I like that saying because it exemplifies for me what I have to do. Um, I have to let it flow through me, not only God's grace and his love, but everything, his, his forgiveness, his mercy, his, the money he gives me, uh, my time and talents. Uh, uh, all of those things, uh, they have to flow through me in order for me to fully experience them. And I'm at our church like the point person for the refugee co-sponsoring. And so um, I'm in contact with Bethany and so they'll say we've got families and so I'm always in the process of trying to get new teams um, trying to assist. Just to reiterate, the overall goal of the Bethany Refugee Resettlement Program is to help refugees become independent, self-sufficient, thriving members of their new community. As the co-sponsors, your team has the unique opportunity to walk alongside a newly arrived refugee family and to provide them with support and encouragement. Now I'd like to ask you to imagine a hypothetical scenario. Ask yourself, if I were first to flee my home and leave behind my community, my belongings, my language, and my culture, and resettle in a very different country from my own, how would I feel? How would I want to be welcomed and supported? What types of support would I need? What would be encouraging for me? Thinking about these things may help you identify how to best serve refugee families. In the next video of this series, we will dive into more details regarding how to support the refugee family as they adjust to their new communities and move towards self-sufficiency and thriving.